Blackjack Workshop is a learning experience to help developing players understand the rules of casino style blackjack. Believe me, the last place in the world you want to go with a pocket full of money, or even some money, and think you're going to double it or triple it is a blackjack table. Unless you really know and understand what it is you're looking at. Once in a while you're getting a situation where things just kind of happen well for you, but for the most part, blackjack is the most even game with a house but it's also the one in which you really need to know and understand the rules and play a consistent game. Remember, the object of the game of casino-style blackjack is two-tiered. One is to get better cards than the dealer on the initial deal, or to be able to maximize your hands and make profit on the hand once the dealer begins to pay it out against the card that the dealer has showing. So your options of the game in blackjack are splitting, doubling down, doubling down after splitting, and insurance and even money. On this instance, we're going to deal with doubling down. Remember, when exercising any one of these options, there is no advantage to the house giving a player an opportunity to win more money on any hand. So the more logical conclusion is the probability that the extra wagers are an opportunity for the house to make more money from the player. How do you counteract that? You counteract it by making those wagers only when the mathematical probabilities are in your favor. In doubling down, a player is allowed to double their wager on certain combinations. When you realize that you've been dealt a combination of 10 or 11, Personally, I would skip doubling down against a nine. There's just too much leeway, but a lot of people like to do it, and sometimes when the cards present themselves in a certain way, it makes sense. But for the most part, ten and against a, a ten and eleven are the two most logical double downs in any game of blackjack that you're playing. If it's a six or less, when you look at the dealer, don't even think about it. Slide out your extra wager. Any time the dealer has to hit, you have an extra chance at making that hand. You don't want to do it quite as readily if the dealer is showing a 10 or an ace. If you don't get the exact right card, you've got a long way to go to make that hand good. But any time the, the, any time the dealer is showing a hand that they're going to have to hit, you want to take advantage of those double down opportunities. You'll be right part of the time and you'll be wrong part of the time. But the trick is to be consistent. Remember, gambling is mathematical probabilities and if you stay with those probabilities, they'll work out in your favor more than not. The number of, that a player is allowed to double down on usually is printed on a small sign on the corner of the table. And that sign also states the table limits, what other options may or may not be allowed in that game. Make sure you understand all of those options for any game you're going to enter. If there's something on the sign that you don't understand or you're not familiar with, get the attention of the pit boss and they'll usually explain the rules to you. Dealers are limited as to what they can tell you and what they can and cannot say to a player. And asking the dealer interrupts the game. Ask the suit inside the pit. That's what they're there for. Most of the time, doubling down is allowed on a combination of, as I said, 9, 10, or 11. On the first two cards dealt to any one player, by this, but the same totals on a second hand if you split and get the right combination of cards creating a double down opportunity. In Southern Nevada, players are allowed to double down on any of these first two cards and then double down after splitting with the right total of cards. In Northern Nevada, players are generally limited to being able to double only against a 10 and 11. Unless you're ahead on house money, the only time you want to double down is when one card will give you 20 or 21 and the dealer is showing a hand they have to hit. Your basic strategy card as we've explained in some of the other videos, is what you base your hit and stay against, but it's not a, an, an absolute. It's a guideline. And the one thing you want to know about playing blackjack is that the more hands that you're able to play, the better chances you're going to have. So you want to make your decisions on whether to hit, stay, double down, split, do whatever you're going to do, based on the knowledge of what it tells you on the, the basic strategy cards and the basic strategy tables, your knowledge of the game, but you still want to exercise some caution when those extra wagers are not in your favor. So study your basic strategy card and know the recommendations. 
Then remember what we said earlier about the House not giving you an extra option that they expect you to win. Limit your extra wages to hands that you have a chance of winning. So let's play this one out and see how it happens. 8 and 3 is a combination of 11. A 9 or a 10 is going to do that handsome real good. The dealer is showing a 5, which is a weak card, medium weak card. So this player is going to slide their extra two into place. The dealer is going to finish positioning those cards, and then she's going to give them one card face down. The next hand is a, is a 10. Same thing. Dealer showing a 5. The indications are to double down. So the dealer is going to go ahead and put another wager into place, give that player one card. Over here we have an 18. Every house in the world, every professional gambling house in the world, to the best of my knowledge, has their dealer stop on 17 because it's mathematically very difficult to hit 17 and survive. One of the things you need to take into consideration in playing this game is you've got a deck of 52 cards. Four of those are aces, only one point or 11. That gets you down to 48. Then there are the tens, the jacks, the kings, and the queens of each suit, which makes 16 cards that are worth 10. And then you've got four cards worth 9, four cards worth 8, four cards worth 7. All of that 7 through 10, all of those 10s, that's half the cards in the deck, will bust most hands. So you have to really stop and think when you hit and when you stay, but follow the, the house rules which generally say the dealers stop on 17 and you stay there. You're not going to win every hand, you're not going to lose every hand, but it's the percentages, don't forget that. So 18 is good. 9 is 6 over here is 15 with the dealers showing a 5, this person would stay. So now we're going to expose the dealer's hand, see what we've got. Dealer has 15, dealer has 17, and that's where we stay. So this person here with the 15 loses. This person with the 18 is going to win. Pay them a matching wager. This person here, how about that? I love it when the right card is there. They get their 21 there, gets them a double, and this person here has 17, so this one becomes a push. So we had one lose, one win on a fairly pat hand, a great double down, and a push on the other one. That's what the situation of doubling down is all about. And remember, the best piece of advice I can give you on it, don't double unless the odds are in your favor. And the odds are in your favor when the dealer has to hit their hand, and especially if you've got some extra money from the house to play with. So that's what doubling down is all about. Enjoy your game and good luck.